Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using Inkscape again to do prototype design for CNC. Now, one of the things, since predominantly what I do in Ink, uh, sorry, um, CNC is two-dimensional, in other words, just, you know, I cut it out, uh, I really focus on using Inkscape because it's relatively easy and very quick to do uh, mock-ups of my designs and send them to being cut. Now, one of the things you can do, uh, and I think I also have it installed because I've used it on the laser. So I also have G-Code tools here installed where I can act I could actually export this directly to G-Code. I prefer utilizing Cut2D as my CAM package, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Right now, what I want to do is just kind of share a couple tips because one of the things that I really like about Inkscape is the ability to have these curved um, ends on the boxes without having to add circles and then join and do all that kind of stuff. You can just, again, when you set a box up here, say I go to set a box and you can have this curve setting up here which you set the camphor of this curve which is really nice so I like that the other piece over here that I want to share is the align tool so it has various modes of aligning as well as distribution because that's what I what that's what I've done here uh, let me switch back to the pointing tool is with these holes as I laid out several of them then just kept copying them over and then I went over and distributed them they don't have to be perfect they just simply have to be distributed equally so again some very powerful tools with this now what I've done is again you can see here I have the design laid out and long story short I built one and just I built the one and then I replicated it to the second and the same thing here built one just replicated which is uh, nice now what I've done is I've exported this as an EPS and uh, as you see uh, Windows decided to already jump over here so I've exported it as, as an EPS and now I've imported it into Cut2D my CAM program and I've already set up a lot of my tool paths well actually all my tool paths and you see I have three primary tool paths so let's turn a couple of these off so my first tool paths uh, are obviously to uh, knock out the holes now one of the things, uh, and I've talked about this in a prior episode, is I'm cutting on the inside of the holes. Um, and the reason I want to do this is I can clean these up later if I need to with a drill of the exact size. I should come out, I should come out pretty nice, but I am going to be doing this out of ABS. So I might get a little bit of tearing, etc. And, and by cutting on the inside allows me, if I need to, just to clean it up a bit with a drill or what have you. Just a little bit of uh, belt and suspenders there. Um, the other piece is is I'm cutting out the spacer ends here you can see the tool pass and then I'm uh, doing the cutout of everything so I'm going to turn on all these jobs now one of the pieces is, is I was um, looking at this I want to jump over to the, to the 3d view now one of the things if you noticed in, in Zerota Labs probably will have called me out on this because it's not published yet but by the time it does is I had missed and when I was producing the video I had missed the fact that one of the holes I had not included it in the job run so one of the things I do want to point out is it's important to really look at the end run of your um, you know project and again to kind of take a look at you know all your different pieces in your job runs coming out and you can see all the holes I haven't missed any holes here this time and I've got all my cutouts here so this is all a pretty good thing so now what we can do is we can export this G code and then we can head over to the machine and cut it out okay so we're back from the computer and we're now here at the CNC and uh, I've got uh, mounted some ABS material that we're going to actually cut the uh, the pieces out of um, mounted up in the machine this is three millimeter ABS stock very lightweight stuff. I'm going to be utilizing the uh, single flue cutter as I've been using for plastic. I'm going to run at pretty high speeds. One of the things that ABS tends to do is melt when you cut it. Um, so again, you want to use a very low flute cutter as well as uh, some pretty good speeds. I forget the speeds. I think around 100 millimeters a second or so. So it'll be moving pretty quick through this. Um, I'm going to be taking about half millimeter cuts and uh, We'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and make some chips.
Okay, welcome back. So we've cut these out. Um, one of the things I forgot with ABS, it's very, very touchy stuff. I mean, you just bump this, and you might notice some chattering in the, in the um, uh, cutout because I didn't use tabs. And it has a little bit of roughness here, and it's probably not the smoothest uh, compared to the acrylic I've cut out with that single bit, but it is okay for what I'm using for, for prototyping. And to be honest with you, um, I'm probably going to remake this out of acrylic. And again, um, the, the washers or spacers actually came out pretty good. So the thing is, I wanted to show you guys what this actually is in the end. And so this is going to be, this is a rail. I've made several of these to experiment with uh, to mount multiple cameras on my drone. So I uh, kind of want to share that. But the real thing about this is, again, some tips and tricks with, you know, Inkscape, taking it to cam program, and then heading to the CNC. This whole thing, uh, aside from making the video, took me less than a half hour to dream this up, to cut this out, to prototype it, and to put it on this quadcopter. And again, this is one of the big things I'm trying to focus on with this channel, is, you know, helping you guys out there come up with ideas, inspirations, and also the toolkit to sort of drive some innovative ideas from either an Etsy, an eBay, or to create your own products, your own prototypes. And that's what this channel is really about, and that's why I sort of jump between the CNC, the 3D printer, the laser, and all these different tools we have available to us as makers today. So anyways, I hope this uh, video was interesting and you found some inspiration out of it or maybe some ideas. If you did, hey, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe's coming up over there. Swag shop up there. And hey, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.